and for me being me it's also therapy it helps me mm. you know um i when if i know what it, people knowing that i can cry i can be vulnerable i can feel anxious i can feel sad i mm. can feel happy mm. um it also helps me not to allow all those negative things to, to imprison me yeah you know because it's easy to fall into that prison and go i have to look perfect i have to yeah. look happy i have to look all, no for me it's therapeutic and it helps and it's, it's the most beautiful thing it's the most liberating thing and welcome to the people's profile i am lord romeo and today we'll be delving into the extraordinary life of one of south africa most beloved icons Sumizi Mshongo. From his humble beginnings to the superstardom, we will explore the journey of a man who made an indelible mark on the South African entertainment industry. Join me as we uncover the compelling story of Sumizi Mshongo. Born on December 23, 1972, in the vibrant township of Soweto, Sumizi's journey began against the backdrop of South Africa's turbulent history. Raised by his mother, veteran actress Mary Twala, Sumizi was exposed to the world of entertainment from a young age. Sumizi's mom, Mary Twala, was born on the 14th of September in 1939. Sede Ramaphosa has paid tribute to Mary Twala Mshongo, describing her as a great icon of the nation's creative community. The veteran South African actor died yesterday at the age of 80. She performed in film, television and theatre and was awarded the Order of Ikamanga in silver by President Sede Ramaphosa last year. Her film credits include Mapansula, Sarafina and Taxi to Soweto. She had a number of roles on TV and in 2015 she won the SAFTA for Best Actress in a TV Comedy for her role as Makambule in school. So Mrs. Dad was called Ndaba Walter Mshongo. He was born on the 3rd of July 1933 and sadly passed away on the 29th of October 1989. He was a South African actor and also a choreographer. He was best known for his role of Mishafani in the 1997. <laughs> It has always been clear that Somizi was born for fame because his both parents were famous people in South African history. As you know, this documentary is looking into the life of how Somizi has always stayed in fame and always been on top of our trains list. <laughs> Looking through my research as I went through for this documentary, I realized that Sumizi had the same personality as his mom, as he was very resilient towards the outside world and he was very expressive towards anything that he had to feel or say towards the people. So we first started my sister's graveyard with my brother. We want to do much as we can, even though it's not that, even though, even though it's, 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 a, it's not just cleaning, it's, it's just there's still a connection that cannot be lost. My father passed away in 1989. And um, I was in, I was 15, I think, by then, but I was in Paris with Serafina when I got the news. And my mother has this habit and I hate it. She always says the same thing every time. She always reminds me that her grave is next to my dad. Okay. <laughs> every single time, like, okay, congrats, like, we know, and it's, it's, an, it's the inevitable that we don't want to have it happen anytime sooner. We to do but we're still grateful that more than 25 years since my father's passing, my mother's still around. 
Sıçınlar olsun begiyle. I got sick and it was said that I'm dying and somebody posted something on Facebook saying rest in peace and nasty things, nasty things and the media went wild, is so is HIV positive, is like they just went crazy. Everyone knows success brings a lot of temptation with it. And sadly, Sumizi's life was not different. As Sumizi had a very successful early career, he had a lot of temptations. Sumizi uh, just shared pictures and videos of himself with his um, partner or boyfriend. And, you know, people are actually advising him that he just, he, he needs to continue um hiding that face even on their wedding day and someone else asked is in this jollof well, you know is in this in nigeria and he responded and said no it's in Limpopo." so ladies and gentlemen please tell me if you see any patterns in the videos i'm about to show you Rafina now sarafina really has a type you like this guy as you can see is a bearded man with my cells and mohali also it was he had a beard and with muscles but now i'm surprised because at nine kaya 959 which is hosted by dineo ranaka and sol penduka so mizi said he's currently seeing this guy uh where they met at the lodge whatever whatever that guy spent on him whatever apparently i heard that the guy spent uh 100k on somis and his friends and the guy is a nigerian they call him sunny obasi his name is sunny obasi a dating they, this guy his name is um polo so mochale yeah polo so mochale the rumors like we expect that somis also is currently seen uh polo so mochale yo guys <laughs> So means like you, 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 and you remember when that there's this video where he said he, him is not gay, he's a pansexual. In this documentary, we try not to be biased and to focus on the truth and the facts only. So my thoughts when I saw Sumizi and Mohali were that is definitely a sugar daddy relationship. I mean, Sumizi is really older. He is. And by virtue of definition of a sugar daddy is somebody who's older who has money. And that's exactly what it was. Which also, in a sense, feeds into a very, very dark stereotype that is created within queer culture, where if you're young and you're good looking and you're still fresh and you're a twink, all you want is a rich guy, all you want is the lifestyle, all you want is to be able to attend the Durban Julys and the red carpets and to carry Louis Vuittons and drink Moet. So in the beginning, it seemed that way. It seemed like, ah, this boy is just going to charge him his money. And these were conversations we were all having. These were conversations were just like, yeah, it's cute that you're posting him, but you do know this is going to end in tears. If we look at the patterns, we realize that Sumizi is actually kind of a sugar daddy. And he actually, I wouldn't say prey on young men, because these young men voluntarily come to him. So... I guess he's not really doing anything wrong, but I felt like that's one of his biggest temptation in life. And coming from a family where his mom and dad had a relationship till the end, a relationship that many would like to have, a relationship that lasted to the end of their lives. A relationship like that really puts a toll on you and really makes you inspired to have a relationship such as one. But if you don't, you end up having to move on from one next relationship to the other. Please do let me know what you guys think of Sumizi's behaviors towards his relationship. If you guys realize that Sumizi has the ability to move on from one thing to the next, if it's his relationship, if it's something that happened to his family, look at this example for one. He lost his brother and he literally just moved on from it. One of the most devastating experiences of his life when he lost his brother Archie and how the pain led him to not mourn properly for those close to him. 
Somizu's brother died after being stabbed at a tavern in 1985, and his death has haunted the TV personality not only because of their relationship, but because he was warned about the death hours before it happened. Speaking on Afternoon Express, Somizu said that the morning before his brother's death, he had bumped into a friend who had told him that Archie had died. That morning, I woke up to buy fat cakes. There was a queue. Behind me, there was a boy I know, Justice. Justice said, Aish, I'm sorry to hear about your brother. I asked him why. He said he passed away. He said someone said he was killed. I told him, no, my brother is there. So, Mrs. said. To, to feel and realize that I want to cry because I'm happy. Yeah. You know? um, Which is a good kind of cry. It's, yes, it's a good kind of cry. I've, I've had real cries for real <laughs> reasons. So, yeah, life, life is amazing. Yo, it's, it's beautiful. I was thinking uh, the other day, I cannot, I cannot come up with anyone who's mm. probably one making more money than you mm. in the game right now or more famous than you. He's more famous than you right now. There has to be no one to, in the country. To be quite honest, and I'm saying it in a very modest way like i'm not being arrogant but it's it's reality it's the truth i know it i feel it i live it <laughs> honestly i live it and i've i've been in a position where there were people that were famous more famous than me yes, 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 there yes. were people that were more richer than me mm. and i know for a fact now for the past year i am the the biggest personality yeah um might not be the richest but I'm I'm ranked there. Yeah. I'm I'm safe. I'm healthy. And it feels like you just woke up one day. And you're like, you know what? I want to do the same thing again. You mm -hmm. know, that's what it feels. No, like. and it, that's that's what, that's the beauty about me. And also, I think I'm clear that it happened now because it's easy to lose yourself. Or one of Sumizi's ideologies is that he never gives up. <laughs> he always keeps on trying, no matter how far it is the dream is or how hard he has to go he never keeps on trying and that's one of his ideologies now, because i'm grounded i know what it feels like or what it it is to be broke i know what it is or what it feels like to so easy you've been broke dude no way oh. get out of here so easy it's kind of it's funny but it's also not funny in a sense that it, it is said that as kids, sorry, as kids, we would be embarrassed or would be made to feel embarrassed of or where we stay. I used to be embarrassed. So I remember I had a group of, we were a group of four friends and we used to call each other JPS. It was job, uh, Philemon and Somizi and Sbusiso. So they used to be a cigarette called JPS. So we called ourselves JPS. And all three of them stayed in big houses. And I was the only one again who stayed in a two room house, two bedroom house. Yeah, two, not two bedroom. Yeah, two room, four room house. Yeah. And I mean, my home did not look like, you know, Majaba Java. It was just a small house. Like, you know, how RTP houses would look, yeah, small house. So then, for the longest time of our friendship, so we used to accompany each other. So as we we walk together, and then I used to be the first one to say goodbye because they carrying on, and I would turn right, left into my street. But my home, home, 1962, where I was born, um was the third house from the corner. So they could see it. So I went further past my, um, my home because I was embarrassed and, and ashamed. And I would walk towards a big house, Gabo Stanley, which is seven, eight houses, just in case they can still see me. In this video, as we see, Sumizi explains his upbringing and how he grew up. One thing that I admire about Sumizi is that he never forgets where he comes from. You know, as Africans to go far, we must also understand where we come from. And that energy gives us 
so much force to pull through no matter what we go through. So that's the second ideology of Somizi. Yeah. So when you say, I'm going to be there, be there, people want to experience you, it pushes the sales and also go anywhere and everywhere. I can t- I got so many sales. A club in, I wouldn't uh, go to clubs mm. and about uh, my, about guy, yeah. my, after three champagnes, they go, I want to buy for my auntie and my sister and my dad and bring 10. And buy a 10. Wow. Yeah. And they'll Beautiful. buy the same way they buy champagnes. They go, bring 10. I was like, so busy. Then boop, they bring boop, their books fire of <laughs> And the last ideology about Sumizi is that he's a very smart man. I mean, he knows how to be with the people. He knows how the people think and he knows how the people act. So I think Sumizi knows how to deal with the people. The reason he's been in this industry. So guys, if you like this documentary, please do comment below and please do subscribe and share this documentary. Hello, everybody. Um, so... Yesterday, McDonald's had a, a promotion where they were selling breakfast for 10 bucks. And um, I saw, there was, a, there was a long queue, but on the side, I saw like some homeless people like watching Tender and Burger. And then I thought, let me buy burgers and then go take them to homeless people. I'm playing with my own money. Just, just because I'm the ambassador doesn't mean I'm getting it for free. I decided out of my own pocket to buy um, between 150 to 500 meals and to go to Jubet Park. There's an amazing after party, free bar, Zahara, Ubi. Say, I say, bar. Oh. This person, what I'm about to say, because we only imagine what happens on the other side. No one knows if there's even the other side. We live in hope based on our religions and our beliefs that they are on the other side listening. But for me, it's like, why? When are we ever going to learn to say what we feel when we feel it at that time? Mizi has a lot to be grateful about, starting from his relationship with his wife, his former wife, and his child, his daughter. Daughter Bahumi finally spoke about her relationship with the Idol's essay judge, detailing how and when she found out he was a gay man. On the third episode of Living the Dream, Balesa M led viewers in on her relationship with Sumizi Mshlongo, saying she did not know that he was gay. All she saw was a boyfriend who was famous for starring in Sarafina. She also mentioned how she did not understand the whole concept of a homosexual, so she had to learn as time went on. She furthermore explained how she found out Sumizi was gay from his mother and sister. They set her down during her heavy pregnant days and told her that, hey, you can see that Sumizi is unlike other men. He's actually gay. Balisa also included how Sumizi's mother, Mary, told her that she should just after giving birth, give them the child and they will take care of the baby, it being Bahomi, so that she can go on with the rest of her life. Sumizi so is neither different from the other celebrities who would do anything or say anything just to be on the trend list or just to be on Twitter's trend list. And that the reason why Sumizi so still is famous is because he stays grounded to who he is and to what he believes in, no matter what he says. In a dinner date. We're on a dinner date. <laughs> what do you mean? In a dinner date. Let a father and son. What? <laughs> Yeah, okay. The last time I saw my father was when we went to Cape Town. Um, yeah, we were all together as a family. I want to chill. I'm getting married again. Lord, help me. <laughs> me, help me. Yeah, sure. Really? Oh, interesting. I have found the one. <laughs> no, I've, <laughs> found, I've found the two. I've just gotten to the place where I've just accepted things, you know. The best thing that I can do at this point is just make sure that, like, you know, I am not, you know, emotionally affected by it. 
So Mizi made a lot of sacrifices for fame. As you can see, it really affected him, his family, and all those close to him. But as long as he's happy, as long as he's moved on from the next thing that's bothering him, I'm happy for Somizi because his legacy is really something that's really to be proud of from his grandparents to his dad and his parents and now his child, Bahumi. I really think there's a lot of potential in this family. learned and I hope everyone in this room learns don't ever laugh or make a joke on someone else's downfall if you can't help shut up if you can't contribute positively shut up the same people on social media that keep on saying we've lost an icon did you treat her like an icon I don't think so did you treat her like you are scared of losing her I don't think so but we can change, we can do better. Moving forward, anyone who's listening to this, let's do better. In the name of Sahara, let's do better. Let nobody, whether famous or not famous, go through hell if you can help. And help does not mean just monetary. Help is a talk, is a call, is a, are you okay? Can I give you a hug? And stuff like that. Let's do better. In the name of Zahara, Zahara, we are sorry. May your soul rest in peace. Please forgive us. And may your soul keep thriving and thriving wherever you are. Your dreams have not ended. They've just ended on earth. But wherever you are, Zahara, please keep shining and forgive us. We love you. Thank you. Maweni is my friend. But yeah, in the disagreement, I say, see, the at according to my beliefs or her own beliefs or her own opinion, it is her opinion. It, it's important to emphasize those things because I don't think that is correct. I don't believe that is correct. When we thank our ancestors we thank them for every little or big thing they do for us because it is a step towards your achievement it is it is an achievement on its own to be able to qualify for a bond to be able to qualify for a car loan or whatever it is a step if you believe in a certain power or certain 
Um, if you believe my ancestors, or even if you are a Christian, you believe in Jesus or God, um, if, if that is how it works, you know, uh, until you pay everything cash, and by then it means only 2% of the population will be able to fully thank their ancestors or their God or whoever that they believe in. No. It doesn't work like that. You give thanks because you have prayed for that step. You have partnered for that first step. And you are thanking them. That house, it is your house. It is under your name. Your bank does not live there. It is your house. You own it. You are the, you are the owner. Imagine, we can't now separate people who are renting and people who own properties. Our people who hire cars. You can't thank your ancestors for a hired car but you can't thank your ancestors for a car that you have bought and you're paying installment on it is your car you own it. it you don't have to pay something full for you to say you own it no otherwise life i fair so I, I don't i completely don't agree with that my friend i disagree I mean, I thank my ancestors for every little thing whether small it's so let me camera. tell you you know you are far off let me tell you why mm. I live my life. I'm consistent yes. with how I live my life. Yeah. Whether I've got 10 million or I've got 10,000 rands, you're gonna live I'll the same. Still live the same. So, so, and that confuses the de- the devil as well. You know, <laughs> they don't you know. know. Is he broke? Is he not broke? <laughs> is he really rich or is not rich? I, I'm I'm consistent. For me, the um, the amount of money doesn't determine how I should live my life. This is true. It's I am living my life to the fullest. So even if you're down to your last ten thousand, honey, I'm gonna spend it, honey. <laughs> let me tell you, I would fly if if they say this is your last, 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 like uh, on real for real for real, my fra. This is your last. You will never have another ten thousand. I will chow it with a bang. <laughs> like I would fly business class to Cape Town. I would go to Cape Bay, Paranga, have the best cocktail and lobster. And then come back in your takes. <laughs> <laughs> I can just imagine you put, stopping in Colesburg, asking the taxi driver, I need the toilet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in Colesburg, which is a far cry from your private jet life that you showed us this past weekend, by the way. Yeah. Look, that private jet was one. You know, like there's, there's private jets and no, then there's a no, private no, no. jet. There's propellers. <laughs> <and then> there's <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the minute you, if you you bend your your head while when you inside, it's not, it's a, not a jet. It's not a jet. Uh, no. You must stand straight. <laughs> wow! I don't, see, this is, these are the things I don't know. You see now, yeah, you, yeah. You, you are learning. learning. I'm learning. You are learning. I'm learning. If, yes. if you down to your last ten thousand, don't 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 just be frugal about it. Just it. blow it. <laughs> and then if you can't stand up in your private jet, it's not a private jet. It's not a private. But this jet. makes me think that I've seen a few people in private jets that are not private jets. You yeah, know, Pro- you know. propellers. Yeah. It, it just packs in a private space. That, okay. That went. Okay. Oh, okay. But now, what would you say has been your the reason you you are besides consistency in the fact that you know you've been doing this since 1992, right? Mm. Even before that, mm. what would you say is your biggest gig to date? Why are you so big? I mean, I saw you being chased by hordes of people in Durban when you were doing your book signing thing uh, in Durban. Uh, uh. The mall stopped. The last time I saw that. Your photo album? Why? In public? What's that? Like, yeah. I, I, I'm enough with Facebook, yes. you know. Yeah. But I'm glad I moved with the times, and and that keeps me relevant, and it also it's it's bankable. Because Frankie was telling me last week, he was like, he loves your videos on Instagram. I they love are, them. They're authentic. They're not pretentious. You always learn something. You you a little bit funny, mm-hmm. you know. And, and you're open. That's yes, what I love yes, about it. You're yes, open. You're yeah. open. You know, is, 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 was that like a tactical decision, or is just that something that you just started doing? Me being open and honest also is also therapeutic for me. True. It 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 is. Uh, I don't get it when people become something that they're not. It's acting and <laughs> acting needs a, a rap. Mm. Like it's a rap. Go sleep. It's a rap. It's a rap. It's so a rap. when do you sleep? Like when do you become you? And for me, being me, it's also therapy. It helps me. Mm. You know. Um. I when if I know what. It, People knowing that I can cry, I can be vulnerable, I can feel anxious, I can feel sad, I mm. can feel happy. Mm. Um, it also helps me not to allow all those negative things to, to imprison me. Yeah. You know, because it's easy to fall into that prison and go, I have to look perfect, I have to yeah. look happy, I have to look... All-. No, for me it's therapeutic and it helps and it's, it's the most beautiful thing, it's the most liberating thing. Is there a time where you ever thought that you... It, okay, this, this, this is when I lose it all. This is, this is, this is it now. Have you ever felt... 